Mr. Governor of Anambra State, Professor Chihoma Soludo, Kamota, Oh, Kamota Kobo, and you know, Nabati, I think, all that one you know, Ibo Queno. Bomono, Zono, Cachano. Um, Your Excellencies, my colleague governors of the Southeast, the chairman of Ohanez and Libo, can say all other protocols duly observed. The day is far well spent. I was supposed to speak by 11.20 a.m. for five minutes. I arrived by 10.40 and had to wait until the commencement. And I, I'm sure most people are tired, getting tired already, and I don't want us to run. So I've abandoned the speech that I wrote. It's on my iPad at, <laughs> back in my car. I will just say a few minutes, um, uh, make a few minutes of remark, just to say one, two, three, since I have five minutes because we, I think we need to recover back time. Some of us will be running in a few minutes' time. Five minutes, five points. The first is gratitude. Gratitude to the organizing committee. Gratitude to Hanez and Ibo. And gratitude to our host governor and our chairman. Um, I think he actually spoke on behalf of all of us, uh, the governors. When, when he was going on, I said, let him take our own time, and um, uh, so to speak. We donated it freely to him uh, uh, to speak on our behalf. Thank you very much for hosting this. Um, this was scheduled by all of us, and I am very delighted to be here. I want to thank all of you, and thank you all for coming. Um, answering the call of this summit shadowed by the five Southeast governors. That's my first point, gratitude and thank you. The second is to, I mean, and that is the most important reason why all of us, the five Southeast governors are here. And that is to let our people know of our unwavering, unalloyed commitment for this project. And so I want to say on behalf of myself, the government, and the great people of Anambra State that we are committed to this Southeast agenda. Uh, it's not just talk. We have started demonstrating this, the way that we are today conducting ourselves. This is really a new dawn in the Southeast. And uh, for those I hear and I see many people on television, you know, talking and admonishing the Southeast governors to come together, you know, unite and do this and so on and so forth. This is not talk. We are. And I am very, very delighted to be part of this particular group. When we had our first or the second uh, Southeast governors forum together in Enugu, we demonstrated that all of us in attendance, no representation as it were. And today we are here. I'm part of that commitment to show that wherever it is in Igbo land, we are together. Ideally, this kind of summit, being the Southeast, should have been held in our eternal political capital, Enugu. But here we are in our way, demonstrating that commitment and solidarity with one another. I want to thank the Governor of Enugu who a few days ago hosted the True Justice and Peace Commission that I set up last year. And all the security advisors of the five governors were there. And you guys met. I've received the report. And I want to believe that our governors were going to consider this in due course. Thank you very much, the Governor. And so, a new dawn, a new team, now give us the agenda. And that brings me to my third point. My third point is that we need a plan. 
I don't want to regale you with my own proposals and so on and so forth. We all have ideas. But for the organizers of this summit, what we need and we we'll very much cherish from all of you, it's not just a two-year plan, a five-year plan, the Vatican plans in century. Give us a hundred-year plan for the Southeast. Ah. <laughs> Leo Stan, you're welcome. Give us a hundred-year plan. And in Anambra, we developed a 50-year plan in Vision 2070. My manifesto derived from that 50-year plan. We are intentionally, deliberately, intently implementing that. We need a plan. Because if you don't have a destination in mind, any road will take you there. I want to believe that at the end of this summit, we have a working group that will give us a Southeast plan and an agenda. Ah, and now I'm giving you more, more job to do. A plan. The next one is homeland consciousness. What will it take to implement this plan? You spoke extensively about the things that we need is and that and so on and so forth. But I want to suggest, dear friends, that if we are not, we don't have the homeland consciousness, we don't believe in ourselves, this will not be achieved. So, let us believe. I've had the speeches given, books of lamentations, they're very good to lament. But I rather like to see the glass as half full than half empty. The Southeast is ready for business. The Southeast is ripe for business. And we must all believe in our ability to turn things around and get the Southeast going again. That, is, that must be the outcome of this particular summit. We can lament about the insecurity and so on and so forth. This is not the most insecure place in the world. Other places are thriving in spite of their own insecurity. Yes, when I arrived in Anambra, eight local governments were totally under siege by these hoodlums. They're all gone. We're settling to business. They will not deter us. Anambra and the Southeast, all of us, must be determined to move our place forward in spite of the challenges. So, I say to our people, but those in diaspora who are waiting for the perfect time to come, when all the problems are solved, when the Southeast governors must have solved all the problems, God didn't make a mistake in making you Onyibwa. God didn't make a mistake in making you from this, to come from the Southeast. If he chose for you to come at the time when all the problems are solved, then he would have decided to make you to come another time, not now. So, homeland consciousness, we must all believe. Stop seeing the half empty, oh, it's all gloom and doom. They shot somebody yesterday and therefore we must all run. If we all do that, this place will be a desolate homeland. We must believe. And my last point, the kind of partnerships you require to make it happen. When we believe, and part of that belief, you <laughs> um, and I now wearing um, a quete from Abia. Um, when I put on the quete from Abia and uh, innocent from Newe, or shoe from uh, where? Who said that? It's not that bad. My shoe comes from Obudike. I believe. Because I do what? I believe. Where, where is yours coming from? 
Huh? Where? No. I can say the fine thing from Italy and from all over the world and so on. We must believe. So self-belief for me is fundamental. If we live here without mainstreaming that, then we all this so wallowing. We may have just come feel good factor. We talk to ourselves and go home. We must believe in ourselves. And finally, after the issue of self-belief comes partnerships. We need not just ourselves, we need Nigeria. Ndibo need Nigeria and Nigeria needs Ndibo. Ndibo need Africa and the world and the world and Africa need Ndibo. As an itinerant people, we cannot be an intolerant people. We need the partnership of everybody. Partnership of the rest of the country, partnership of the diaspora, partnership with the international community. When we recently recruited about 5,000 teachers in our number, we didn't ask people where you come from. In that recruitment, we have people from all over the country. And we're now recruiting medical personnel. I think an officer mistakenly advertised that it was only for people from Anambra, and we've got her to apologize. As a people, itinerant people who are everywhere, we cannot afford to be provincial. We can't afford to be provincial. We must be able to I mean, what does the Igbo child need? The Igbo child needs to be taught by the best teacher anywhere in the world, not to be taught by the teacher from his village, or needing medical attention to only have medical attention from somebody from his or her village. No, you want to have attention from the best in the world, and that's who we are. We must think from act global but our homeland to build a livable and prosperous homeland must be a mission and for that to happen we need ourselves and we need the world i want to thank you very much and god bless you